Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share some of my childhood memories with you. I think it's such a perfect way of getting to know someone and I really hope you enjoy it. I would also love to know what your favorite childhood memory is. Since the day I started my YouTube channel, I always thought of doing a childhood memory or a childhood moments video and I think such a good way to get to know someone is by them telling you the story of their childhood, how they grew up, the memories that they had and I thought that the perfect place to start was at the beginning. So my parents met one another and my dad was a medical doctor, my mom was a nurse and they fell in love and after five years of being married they wanted to start a family and they couldn't fall pregnant so they went for in vitro and after a while I eventually fell out of a test tube <laughs> so I'm a test tube baby I was raised in such a way that I felt proud about it because I felt like it, it was just meant to be my parents prayed for me they desperately wanted me and God in a way gave me to them. So I was quite proud about being a test tube baby since, since a very young age. I was born in Bloemfontein and when I was one years old we moved to Folksrust in Mpumalanga. So Folksrust is a very small town on the edge of Mpumalanga, Kozulu Natal and the Free State. We're a very small town, everyone knows one another and my dad was one of the doctors in town. Very average household. I basically lived in the same house my whole life and while paging through all of these albums I just had such a grateful feeling because I saw all of these memories and I realized that they're filled with unconditional love. Yes I grew up in a very strict family. My parents uh, you know, we always knew what is right, what is wrong, what we can do, what we can't do. Their yes was their yes, their no was their no. And I'm so grateful for that. So, let's start. thought of showing you a few pictures of me as a child. Um, let me see. So this was, obviously all of you probably have this, your first little <laughs> locks being cut. So I was a curly-headed child, I had a little afro and... Like I've mentioned, my life is literally filled with wonderful memories. Um, not always easy, but I can never think of a time in my life as a young kid where I felt like I didn't have everything I needed. And I've realized that everything I needed at that age wasn't necessarily money. It was a family, it was a support system, it was friends, it was people who loved me. And I was really fortunate to have that. So this is me and my dad. We always go to Hartenbos on holidays since I was like literally a baby. I think I'm more similar to my dad than to my mom. Certain ways I am, you know, I am like my mom, but I'm definitely my dad's little daughter. And my dad has a very law scope and me as well. So we tend to remember the things that we find important and not always listen. So I'm working on my listening skills but I absolutely love my dad. And my first memory of my dad was not the fact that he worked so hard and he wasn't at home all of the time. It was the fact that when he was at home, he spent quality time with us. So we would probably get back home at about seven in the evenings. We'll always be ready in our pajamas. And we knew that as soon as my dad walked through the door, we are going to play hide and seek. So my dad um, knew exactly where we were hiding every time, but he just looked through all of the rooms I used to hide in the laundry bin. So I used to hide in the laundry bin, my brother used to hide in the cupboard, and we would play hide and seek. And I think that's the first lesson that I've learned from my parents, is that it's not necessarily the amount of time that you spend with your children, it is the quality of time. And I had a lot of quality, quality time. Uh, from from my mom and my dad and my mom is a very girly mom so she used to dress me up I probably took off the dress <laughs> by, by now then this is the very first pic um, so I'm reading my mom's notes in the album my eerste maaikie in Volksrust Swanay Lombard so this is my very first friend I made 
as a little girl. So this is us. <laughs> And till this day, she is my best friend. So is my heart's friend in. She literally knows me from the inside out. And I'm so fortunate that I was given a friend for life. And yes, yeah, so this is us playing together. She had the most, the cutest cheeks. She's going to hate me for this, but anyways. This was my first birthday. As you can see, Swana is here eating the cake. So probably why her cheeks were so chubby then. Um, yes, my first birthday. I thought that this picture actually describes my childhood perfectly. This is me and my brother literally just playing and being carefree. And it's almost like I felt like I could just jump and someone would be there to catch me. My parents would be there to catch me. So we literally differ 17 months, but I used to tell him what he should do, you know, the wrong things, and then he would follow my lead and then he would get all of the blame. So that's probably not the good, a good thing, but we used to spend so much time together. So I would say that this basically sums up my brother and my relationship. We're so close. I'm obviously teasing him here, <laughs> if you can see it. I'm pulling on his underpants. But, um, yeah, so carefree and just enjoying childhood. I once heard someone say that play is a child's job, which is so true. Uh, this was my ninth tea party and we had a tea party, everyone dressed up as, as adults. It was just such great memories. Swane is here, all of my friends, Juanita. <laughs> so yeah, we had a sporting fun day. As you can see, my mom blow dried my hair. When I was young, I was really self-aware self and not self-aware in a good way. I was very aware of my curly hair and I didn't really like it. So whenever we had big events or prize givings or things like that, I begged my mom to blow dry my hair. Um, so even though I'm, I look like extremely happy on this photo, still inside of me there was this little girl who, was, who had a lack of self-confidence because of her curly hair and because of her skinny legs, you know, people calling me spaghetti legs in, in school. This is also Swanay. <laughs> Me and Swanay at our first school concert. We had to put on some makeup and my parents spent time curling our hair. And my mom was always that mom who walked the extra mile for everything. She was the mom who used to lay the tables at high school, who used to, you know, sell the tickets, who used to make the 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 uh, the soup for for market days so she was always the mom she didn't work so I come from a almost one income family where my, my dad was the only one working and my mom spent time with us and she was always 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 there this is a very funny story so the very 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 first competition almost like a modeling competition I entered was my cousin Gurlai who entered me for Mejefra Meerman. So it was December holiday, we were at Hartenbos, and this is me posing just before we went <laughs> for the competition. And I ended up winning it. And yes, it was just, my, my family has always thought that I'm, you know, I'm beautiful and I have talent, you know, that they really loved me so much and they entered me into these competitions. And I've realized the one misperception people have about entering Miss South Africa or Miss World is that you have to have a lot of experience. You shouldn't be over-prepared for it. Yes, you have to be prepared, but not over-prepared. And people come to me with, their girls are like 16 years old and they tell me they want to enter Miss South Africa, what should they do, how should they prepare and just like finish school first, you know, finish school, be a child, um, go to varsity, start studying, get some life experience, that's so much more that you can do, that's the best thing you can do before you enter something like Miss South Africa and Miss South Africa shouldn't be your only dream because what if you become a South Africa like me at the age of 21 and Miss World at 22 or 23 and you realize you've literally reached your goal, your life brand goal at the age of 23, 24. So know what you want to do with your life after that. So that was just like <laughs> some 
some of the South Africa advice. So I've mentioned obviously Swanay and we always go on family and friend trips together. So this was us, we went to the Kruger National Park. This was us, let me see if I can find a better picture. <laughs> Doing our ballet exam together. Yes, we did everything together as you can see. So coming from a very small town, you realize that you don't necessarily have all of the opportunities um, as people who grow up in big cities have. And I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, you come from a very small town. Don't you think that you could have gotten so much further in life if you came from a big city or you had more opportunities? And I felt like being from a small town taught me to kind of look at the opportunities and grab opportunities where if I had all of them in front of me I probably would have taken them for granted so I knew that I only had a certain amount of opportunities and my parents taught me and my brother that certain things will come your way and you have to literally take them in you have to use everything that come your way and I remember we were I was you know in the Rerenage team so the public speaking team at school and um, I did hockey I did netball I did athletics so we were literally taught first of all we didn't we weren't a lot of children in the school so we had to do everything and second of all you knew that you have to develop all of these different parts of you so that when you are out there in the big world you will be ready for the opportunities that come your way this is a very special picture and this is me and my friends in the first netball team. My mom was our, our coach, our netball coach, because she was really good at netball. This is a picture of our school's academic top 10. So when I was in primary school, I really struggled with mathematics and I had very little self-confidence. I, I had a lack in self-confidence when it comes to my mathematics skills. And as I grew older, I really worked hard at it had a lot of extra classes and I ended up doing really well in mathematics and this is yes I was second in our top team this is Neil <laughs> we used to call him Neilki he always won he's the smartest this was a very proud day for my parents and for me as I was chosen as the chair of the school committee in my matric year and my brother was chosen as the chair of the school committee for his matric year so he was in grade 11 I was in grade 12 and I handed over the chair trophy to him so my parents as you can see is very very proud and I was really proud of my brother as well the last of my high school memories is the memory of my matric farewell. So in different countries you might call it your prom nights, but this was my matric farewell. And Werner would probably cringe if he sees this picture. But yes, I wore a gold dress to my matric farewell. And here I am making a speech as the head girl of the school. Yes, I have so many memories from my childhood that I'm taking with me. And the one thing that I've learned from this whole experience and reflecting actually is that I didn't have everything, but I had everything. I didn't have a lot of materialistic things and we weren't wealthy and rich and we didn't go on extravagant family holidays, but I did have everything. I had love and I had support and I had friends for life and unconditional love. So that is the gift that I would like to give my children is the things that are for free and the things that we often take for granted.